It's, it's the highest paid skill in the world, man. In business, it's the highest paid skill. Are you kidding me? I went, I, I became educated. I went and got a degree so that I wouldn't have to learn sales. I hate sales. Um, what, what was some of the first questions? I'm curious, you know, uh, uh, what was the first questions that, uh, outside of the ones you just mentioned earlier, in, in your growth, what were some of the tough, challenging questions that Patrick Ben David had asked you to cause you to rethink how you thought about money and entrepreneurship as a young entrepreneur? Um, I think I think the first thing that I had to to learn outside of prospecting was was the concept of being in sales, and um, you know people look down on sales today. I was reading something to my guys last night, and it's in Rich Dad Poor Dad, and Robert Kiyosaki. I think he's speaking in Shanghai. And he sits down with this girl who's a, she's a news uh, paper writer, uh, news reporter. And uh, she says, man, you're the best selling author in the world. And she says, I write, but none of my stuff takes off. And he says, you're a phenomenal writer. I think you should go and take a sales class. And she says, what? Are you kidding me? I went, I, I became educated. I went and got a degree so that I wouldn't have to learn sales. Like I don't, I, I went and got a degree. And she literally said, I went and got a degree. So I wouldn't have to do that. I hate sales. Hmm. And he says, so you, you want to, he says, he says, look at, look at, look at what my book says. And it's on your notes. It says best selling author. And you want to be best writing author or you want to be best <laughs> selling author. And she left pissed. She walked away. But I think that skill of learning, learning sales, um, is it's, it's the highest paid skill in the world, man. In business, it's a highest paid skill. People, people, Oh, oh, and what, what did it say? It says school teaches you to specialize in something, right? And, and, and you really, to, to kind of dive into one thing and get locked into one thing. Mm -hmm. And Robert Kiyosaki talks about in his book, how he tried so many different things, military, left that, uh, got a job, ended up getting a job at Xerox just because it taught him sales yeah. and then left that and then went here and he just wanted experience. And it said, most people want uh, uh, just a job, but successful people want experience and skill sets. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, learning those skill sets of communication, um, uh, sales, prospecting, leadership, uh, those were things that those were the hardest things to learn prospecting, then sales and leadership. Cause it was kind of in that order for me, uh, were, were some of the things that I had to learn and it wasn't natural to me. Um, I was super young, so it took a lot of preparation. I had to read a lot. Yep. A lot and over prepare where somebody that maybe was older, more credible and had a degree. I didn't college dropout server. Um, so I had to work on myself and it's it doesn't matter where you are today. If you're willing to do the work and over prepare, you'll find confidence in your preparation. And uh, so I so connecting to the process of, uh, of becoming an entrepreneur, what that schedule looked like and the commitment and the personal development. That was something new to me. So, George, people are watching this right now. Young entrepreneur. You just mentioned sales. They don't teach sales in high school. They don't teach sales in college. You're one of the best trainers, not only in PHP agency regarding this topic, but Pat, you know, I, I've been in planning meetings for our conventions, our national conventions where Magic Johnson shows up and Kevin Hart shows up and the late great Kobe Bryant shows up. And the question arises, who can we hire as a sales speaker, as a sales trainer to come to our company? And I've seen our CEO say, George, what are you talking about? You're the best trainer out there as, as, as it relates to the subject. I, don't, I can't think of anybody else to teach on a topic of sales than you. You, as in George Palayo. So if you're going to give, Matt. yeah, bro. So if, if, if you were going to give guidance to a young entrepreneur right now, watching this Facebook Live, watching this YouTube episode, is there any tips that you would give for somebody in your preparation to be good in sales? Because sometimes people think salesman is bad or car salesman, win-lose situation. Uh, and people just have a negative connotation to the word sales or salesperson. Yeah, I, I broke it down to three P's. Um, people, are, so first of all, my number one was learning the product, um, learning the presentation and learning people. And I think that's what sales for me is. The product, whatever you're, whatever you're, you're marketing or you're selling um, if you become an expert in it and you become a believer in that product, uh, you're going to feel comfortable when you're talking to people about what you're doing. And so mastering the product, taking the time to really learn what you're selling, what's the benefit of it, what's the value, who is it good for, who is it not good for, 
Um, and so I, I think I, got, I became very familiar with that because when I started to go into those, those meetings and I went from trying to just sell something to I really believe in what I'm selling and I see the value in it, my whole body language changed and I became comfortable. And they say 55% of what we do is, is body language, 38% is tone of voice and 7% is actual content language. And, and so, <laughs> huh? And words, you know? Yeah, the words. And so I think, I think learning the product changed my, uh, my level of confidence when I was sitting down with people because I really believed in what I was doing. And then the second thing was, because I was really nervous and I was new and it's normal to be, to, to be nervous when you're new. Um, I had to really write out my entire presentation verbatim. And I wrote down everything that I was going to say and everything that that person could say and every question they could ask. And I remember staying up probably like one night till three, four in the morning. And I was just typing, typing, typing because I was so nervous. I would, I would lose my, my train of thought. And I had to work on, on kind of developing some consistency in my presentation and then the last part was learning people. So once I got comfortable with the product and once I got comfortable with the presentation or the way I was explaining what we offer, what we do, because some of you guys are in different industries. Um, then from there, I was able to really understand people. And there's two things that Nick Murray talks about in his book, The Game of Numbers. And he says, an average salesperson uh, focuses on what to say, while a successful person focuses on how to say it. And then the second part, was an average salesperson focuses on what people are thinking while a successful salesperson focuses on what people are feeling. So once I knew the product, then I knew the presentation, then I was able to focus on the actual delivery of it and really connect with the person. Um, so those, those, were, those were things that helped me through my process. Phenomenal, man. I love it. Uh, it, it, it blows my mind because, you know, Patrick has had us reading that book it's the book of the month, Game of Numbers by Nick Murray. And uh, he really breaks down that book in four sections in terms of the game of numbers, which is, which is, um, you know, just the, the, the your, your behavior, your, 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 your belief, your endurance. And the last one is skills, which was, was kind of like, wait, people think that skills is number one. Right. And so uh, what, what's some of the biggest mistakes that you faced as a young entrepreneur uh, in sales that, that if somebody watching this right now is listening, if you avoid this, you get much more ahead uh, or early in your career as a, in, in sales or as an entrepreneur. I think, I think the first thing I had to overcome was consistency um, in terms of being consistent every day in my effort. And there was a, a quote that I heard and it really helped me change the way I valued it in my day at the end of the day. Because as an entrepreneur, at the end of the day, we all have that check-in with ourselves while we're driving home, we're leaving the office, you know, we're reflecting. Um, and I think that the, the quote said, don't judge the day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds you plant. And I started to realize that the days that I felt the most confident uh, about my business and where I was going were, were the days that I worked the hardest. And regardless of what results came, I started to find faith in, uh, in work ethic. Um, and so I was very inconsistent. And that's, that's what created inconsistent income. They say inconsistent thinking uh, or erratic performance stems from erratic thinking. Inconsistent performance stems from inconsistent thinking. Um, I was really up and down. I'd get excited and build some momentum. Then something would happen. I'd get discouraged. And I would let those little failures kind of throw me off and then lose my momentum. And so I think um, developing emotional maturity uh, was another one. So consistency was one, emotional maturity, how to change uh, the way I saw things, how to have more faith in the process okay. um, was another one. And- um, how, did you, how did you realize that you weren't emotionally mature? Like what would go on, what would go wrong? So when, I realized it in my inconsistency, my performance and the power of a mentor, because we were in an environment, right? And this is the power of finding a coach, finding a mentor, uh, holding yourself accountable. At that moment, I had a lot of external accountability. And so when you have external accountability and you have to put the numbers up for what you did, um, you, you could see the inconsistency. And then when you get called out on it, <laughs> okay. right? I, I, again, I was, 
I wish I would have said I had the awareness and the foresight to really inspect my business, but I, I didn't at that moment. I was still coming from that employee mindset, trying to become an entrepreneur. And so instead of having a boss, I found a coach. And um, for the people that watch your, your channel and your content, YouTube wasn't really big at that point. This was uh, 2005, 2006, 2007. It hadn't really blown up. And there weren't people like you creating content and coaching and challenging and teaching and people that maybe I could reach out to for mentorship or work with or intern with. And um, if I would have, that's all I was looking for. But, but I also knew what I needed. I needed a coach. I needed a mentor. Um, so external accountability pointed out a lot of those, those weaknesses. And, um, and then through processing with, with Patrick, who Matt talked about as a CEO of PHP agency, my, our, our mentor, my mentor at the time, um, he was able to help me to, to see that. And, and so it was something that I, I, I learned from a mentor, from a coach, um, yeah, the, the emotional inconsistency.